Now, in case this, we're approaching the end of the evening now, soon we'll be going to eat delicious food and relax and enjoy ourselves. It's going to be splendid. But before that, how could we consider this evening complete without me interviewing a quantum physicist? <laughs> I think if I didn't interview a quantum physicist now, on the way home, you'd go, hmm, something was missing this evening. <laughs> yes, it was perfectly pleasant to see those children who'd had their lives enhanced by meditation. Nice to see Martin Scorsese, more relaxed than we've ever seen him. <laughs> but I really think I'd like to have seen Russell Brand interview a quantum physicist. <laughs> we have anticipated that need. Please welcome, well, let's hold on, there's some facts here on, on teleprompter, right? He's a world-renowned, Harvard-trained quantum physicist. We ain't just got some quantum physicist off the street. <laughs> this one's renowned. You go to Sri Lanka and say, name a quantum physicist, they'll go, oh, John Hagelin, he's good, isn't he? <laughs> Harvard, proper good school, that, out of the Facebook film. Brilliant. <laughs> Imagine that. So, after this bit of me finishes in a minute, a new bit of life will begin where I talk to a quantum physicist, although he might tell us that that has already happened. <laughs> due to the baffling nature of quantum physics. Please welcome to the stage a man who can answer all those questions and more and probably give us new questions which we've already got the answers to and the very paradigm of interrogative nature can be unraveled like a wormhole. Please welcome John Hagelin. <laughs> John, which chair would you prefer to sit in, or do you believe in a parallel universe we're sitting in both of them anyway? <laughs> Two simultaneously, but give me the north. Good, as long as you're happy. John, I, I do have genuine questions of a quantum physicist. You talk funny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What you just said then was a hate crime against the English. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned nothing from the night's proceedings. <laughs> Come straight out and done a hate crime. Uh, John, why on earth are you a quantum physicist even here on a night where we're talking about transcendental meditation? That should be obvious. Um, quantum physics has basically revealed the fundamental unity of life. Surface diversity, but deeper levels at the molecular, atomic, subatomic, subnuclear, electroweak unified, etc., culminates in the discovery of what's called the unified field fulfilling Einstein's dream of revealing the fundamental unity at the basis of the diversity of the universe. Now, what does that have to do with us? How dare you say, I talk funny, and then come out with that? <laughs> so you're saying that the idea that things are separate and distinct from each other on a material level is illusory. Is sensory that what you're saying? illusion. That's correct. It's a sensory illusion. That's correct. correct. But you can go beyond the senses. And that's what meditation traditionally is, properly understood it is a technique to pull the awareness from the outwardly directed senses powerfully within to experience deeper levels of mind, simpler, quieter, more unified levels of the thinking process, and then slipping beyond thought, that's where the transcendental comes in, beyond thought altogether to experience this universal unity at the basis of mind and matter. So we can access neurologically in our own minds the unifying field of creativity from which all energy and matter has come, perhaps even the cosmos and universe itself. Is that what you're saying? That's right. And it's not just philosophically so. interesting, but it's really practically important because Why? that meditative state is considered to be a fourth state of consciousness. That means not waking, dreaming, sleeping, in which the entire brain, as we've heard, is engaged. And that orderly, coherent style of functioning of the brain develops the full potential of human life. So truth be told, Meditation, transcendental meditation, comes from the ancient wisdom of yoga, and it's designed, it's engineered to develop the full potential of the brain. And as a side benefit, stress, stress-related illness melts away. John, do you reckon if through meditation we can achieve access to a fuller state of consciousness, it may help us to bring about a global revolution where we found a society based on spiritual principles rather than material and economic ones? It's the only way. Because yes, I thought there'd be a revolution tonight. I'm right in the mood. 
a society based on utilizing 5% of the innate potential of the brain is going to be more or less like the society we have. Yeah, idiots. <laughs> We're like monkeys. But We're just like stupid monkeys. <laughs> But if we utilize more of them, we'll become more sophisticated. We'll build a utopia, a blissful utopia. Smarter monkeys, yeah. We'll still be sort of monkeys. The, the, at least of an evening in front of the laptop. Right, kids? If the <laughs> fundamental reality of life is unity, if we are all one at our core but don't see it, that bringing that unity from within to the surface of perception and understanding, that is a transformed world. That is a unified world. That is right. a peaceful world. That's and important. a side effect of what we're doing. So. I see. So through this, we can achieve awareness of the unity that exists between all of us, that we are right. unity. Distinction, nation, religion, creed, these are all illusions. We're building our lives around illusion. If we know something to be true, then we should build our culture, our societies, our faiths, our institutions around that truth, and unity will be a, 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 an inevitable consequence of that. I think you deserve to be married to Katy Perry. It's worked out. <laughs> thank you very much. It's, thank you. It made uh, the years of drug addiction worthwhile. Uh -huh. And thank... <laughs> I'm so glad, and I hope my son can uh, follow in your footsteps. And I just want to thank everybody He's going to have to. I'm taking him home as a butler. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks I've always to wanted a quantum physicist butler. <laughs> you rang, my lord? <laughs> Actually, not yet. It probably pays better than being a quantum physicist. Anyway, I want to thank so much all of you who've helped us bring TM to half a million kids in the last few years. Risk at-risk children. And yeah, well done! And millions in the years to come. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John Hagelin. And fa uh, later on, I want to ask you all questions how electrons can exist simultaneously, what neutrinos are. There's loads of questions I need to know the answers to yeah. to help me to do this revolution. You get back here and give me a cuddle. All right. <laughs> Dessert chatter. Neutrinos. Thanks, John. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage our bizarre and beautiful overlord, Mr. David Lynch. <laughs> do you want me to stand here or shall I just, what do you, what do you like to happen? I want you to stand here. Stand here. He's a brilliant director. <laughs> Russell and I would now like to say Thank you all very much for being here tonight, and let's go have a good dinner. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.